buy the yellow pages in your telephone book. Now you can wear out the yellow pages instead of yourself. And now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, Columbia University's gift to television, the beautiful and talented Miss Sue Oakland. The man on my left is an old friend of What's My Line, and we've missed him. And it's a pleasure to welcome back Tony Randall. And it's a pleasure to welcome Arlene Francis, too. Uh And now a gentleman who is a direct hit from coast to coast, and as far as I know, has never struck out, Mr. Bennett, sir. Well, this was my lucky week. I went to speak in Boston on Thursday night and found that John Daly had been there Wednesday night. <laughs> he had uh, gone up to his Tilton school, I guess, which he always does. And here he is, our famous panel moderator, John Charles Day. Look, this was by way of being my uh, New England week. And I must say, Bennett, you have an enormous number of friends up in Massachusetts, which puzzled me, and I'm still trying to find out how it happened. <laughs> but Arlene, we had the Deaconess Development Dinner on Good. Wednesday night, and there must be 50 personal messages to give you from all of your friends from the medical fraternity in Boston. Good. Thank you. Boston is, as you all know, Arlene's hometown. And, uh, and I'm proud of it. And they're very proud of you, too. And to celebrate all these great occasions, we have Sue with us and Tony with us, and uh, so we're really laying on a celebration tonight. Get your masks on right away. We're going to have a special night. We're going to have two mystery guests tonight. So you're duly and properly warned, and uh, we'll meet our first uh, mystery guest as soon as you tell me that um, your blindfolds are all in place. Yes, sir. Are they now in place? Yes, sir. Well, fine. Will our first mystery challenger enter and sign in, please? A gentle reminder, panel, that since we are starting off with a mystery challenger tonight, we use the other form of questioning, one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and we will begin with, uh, let it serve. Well, that deep-throated roar I heard from the audience sometimes denotes a gentleman from the athletic field. Do you, are you famous for any kind of athletics? Yes. Miss Oakland? Um, well... They tell me that today was the last day, the positive last day of a certain season. Do you have anything to do with football? Yes. Tony? Are you an active player? <laughs> no. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Mm -mm. Do you have anything to do with that remarkable organization known as the Green Bay Packers? <laughs> yes. Are you the coach? Sure. Yes. Vince Lombardi? <laughs> Vince Lombardi. <laughs> And you know, there's one thing when you see Vince, when, when he was playing at Fordham, he was what, I have to go back into the history books a bit for this, a little, <laughs> what, it was about ten years ago when just you were playing few, at Fordham. Just a few just years ago. Just a few ago. years ago. And uh, you were one of the seven blocks of granite, is that not right? That's correct, seven John. blocks of granite. And uh, this past season, of course, he merely proved again that uh, he's not only a head coach and general manager uh, of the Packers, but he is the, the coach in the uh, whole professional football field. And, uh, we want to congratulate 
congratulations. John. John, John, might I tell Vince Lombardi something I'm sure he doesn't know? The Giants would like to have you back. <laughs> Thank you, you were up at West Point also for yes, what? Uh, six years with uh, six, with Red Blake. With Red yeah. Blake. That's how I knew because I know I know Red. He's a, yes. oh one of the finest men, and he was uh, talking uh, about uh, you know the days. My, you ever heard of the great Charlie Daly, Vince? Oh, very well. That was my second yeah. cousin. <laughs> That's as close as I ever came to getting any fame. Uh, uh, but uh, you were at West Point. Charlie no, was there no, didn't he, anyway. A little bit before my time. He's a great football player. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. I don't think Charlie Daly ever weighed more than 150 pounds when he was quarterback at Harvard and then later at West Point. He was, uh, he was quite uh, slight, yeah. uh, John. Could, he, but, could uh, he play today, or is it... Uh, I doubt it. You'd have to have a little, yes. more than, yes. a little more than that. I couldn't play today either. <laughs> you couldn't play today? A block of granite? <laughs> oh, no. Well, I must say that... What's the toughest team you faced this year? Was it Dallas? Well, we have, uh, I think, Baltimore and Dallas. They're all about the same level, uh, and it, uh, they're all tough, really, week to week. With one or two exceptions. <laughs> With one or two exceptions. But you sure are the toughest. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you. we are much pleased that you'd be kind enough to give us a chunk of a Sunday night and come down to New York to see us, and uh, actually what we wanted to do, because we speak not only for our own crew here, but uh, for everybody, we're proud of the kind of football you play, and we congratulate you on the excellence with which it is played under your direction, sir. Well, thank you very much. Thanks John. very much. Well, it's nice to have you here. another contestant for you in just a moment to uh, meet our first regular contestant. Will you uh, sign in after you've entered, please? <laughs> Helen Corwin. Right, ma'am? Is it Miss or Mrs. Cohen? Mrs. Cohen. Mrs. Cohen, where are you from? Blythe, California. Blythe, California. Yes. Where is that? South? It's south on the Colorado River. On the Colorado River. It's yeah. nice to have you with us. And Mrs. Cohen, may I present our pal? How do you do? Will you join me over here, please? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Mm -hmm. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Corwin is self-employed and deals in a product. And we will begin things with uh, Tony Randall. Mrs. Corwin, is this product a living thing? No. One down and nine to go, Miss French. I'm off and running. <laughs> is it a product that any of us on the panel might have? Yes. Uh, is it a product that is owned by men as well as women then? Yes. Is it found indoors? It could be. Is it a useful product? Very. Can I hold it in my hand? Yes, you could. Would I ever put it in my mouth? No. no. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Cohen, does this product of yours ever grow in the ground or near the ground? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Oakley. Is it something uh, that would be likely to be used uh, for a special purpose? Yes. Do you do something with it? Yes. Um, you gave a kind of hesitant answer about using it in the house. Would you be more likely to use it outside? Yes. Yes, and I believe the question is originally posed was, could you find it in the house? We will agree that it could be found indoors. That was the exact phrasing. Yes, I see. But you, if you were using it, you would use it outside. Yes. Um, do you put it uh, on in any way, is it, uh, other than in your hand? I mean, is it in some way put on the person? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Randall. Mrs. Corwin, does it have moving parts? Yes, it does. does it, are any of these parts wheels? No. Nope. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Is it used in any kind of sport? Yes. Uh, is it mechanical? 
No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. M Mrs. Cohen, isn't Blythe somewhere near the Salton Sea? Isn't there water and near where you are? I just it's, as... it's on the Colorado River. Does the product that you are concerned with, is it ever used in or near the water? Is it ever used in or near the water? I would say we'd have to agree. It could near, be used yeah. in or near the water, but, yes. But it is never done... You don't use this product if you're doing something in or on top of the water. Is that correct? Necessarily. It's not I, primarily connected with water. Right. In other words, nothing like a boat or a water skis or anything like that. Sort, right? Why? Is this product used by the military? <laughs> no. Ah, uh, 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 small conference. We want to be fair. I know you do. <laughs> we will now pause one minute for something or the other. Now we will agree that uh, this product is is uh, used by the military. But it is not dangerous, this product. Is that correct? No. It shouldn't be. Right. And you say it can no. be used in a sport? Yes. Yeah. Is, is it ever used by one nationality in particular? No. No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Oakland. <laughs> in the military? <laughs> it's not a boomerang, yes. It's some sort of implement that you hold in your hand. No, we have said that it could be held in the it hand. It could be held in the mm -hmm. hand. Then again, what you're implying then is that when it's in use, it is not necessarily in the hand. I don't mean to imply anything. I was well, merely saying that what we... No, 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 no. No implications to no. be had or inferences to be taken. And there was none, none of this has been gone over then. Then when it's in use, is it touching any part of your body? Yes. <laughs> Not your hand. Yes. Well, uh, let me say that it's not necessary. This is not, to, this is not to say that the hand could not come in contact with it, but you wouldn't tend to have the hands um, steadily and consistently. Is the, right. Is the part of the body that it comes in contact with below the waist? Mm. It could be both. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes in contact with a large area? <laughs> Depending on how large an area you have, often. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Miss Oakley. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Uh-huh. Uh, can it come in contact with, um... Well... Careful, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, but it's not on. Remember, it's not on. It's not worn. It's just touching. Um, and it definitely has something to do with a sport. We said it, it could, could be related to a sport. Does it come in contact with the leg? Yes. Does it come in contact with, um, with your feet? Mm. Yes. Does it do something to the body? No, nothing we know of. Oh, good. Eight down and two to go, Tony Randall. This very good. Yeah, I, I, well, I feel that I'm on to it now. Good show. <laughs> Then you've got it. Yes, by George, I think I haven't it. Anyway, if we were to divine what the sport is, would we then be pretty sure of knowing what the... I wouldn't spend too much time trying to divine what the sport was. I would pay particular attention to the fact that it has been said that it could have a relationship to a sport. But, but it no is great not stress. clothing, and it has moving parts. Is that correct? It does have moving parts. Having established that... Right. And finding myself in a black cul-de-sac. Right. I'm passing to our lead. <laughs> <laughs> Does this whatever it is go up and down ever? Sometimes. <laughs> is it springy? <laughs> By that I mean, uh, when this is in use, do you put your feet on any part of it? Yep. Yeah. You do. Uh, does it? May I rule out pogo stick? It's nothing like that. Yeah, I'd rule out pogo. Does it have any wings that flap? No. <laughs> what did you have in mind? One of those um, 
can't think what they are. An aeroplane. No, no something right. that goes along the ground. Glider. Next week, Glider. Glider. down a one We've go. eliminated wheels, haven't we, Miss? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was one of my slight contributions to this otherwise worthless uh, procedure. Can a person get on top of it or inside it? <coughs> yes. Don't say any more yes. than yes. Mm -hmm. Might it be useful when one is sleeping at night? <laughs> Actually, let me say that historically and traditionally, it is said to have had a very useful application in just this area. Now, uh, can I eliminate sleeping bags and things of that sort? Mm -hmm. yeah. I eliminate... Yes, it has to have moving parts, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, is this used in transportation of any kind? Mm -hmm. You yes. should say so. Mm -hmm. It is, but it has no wheel. Mm -hmm. I think would I it know. Be, would it be anything used in, in snow? You could use yes. it in snow, yes. But can I eliminate sleds and, and uh, skis and toboggans? If you want to cut them out of your life, you certainly <laughs> might. Well, if Tony says he knows what it is, Fifteen I'll Fifteen seconds for a cut. I know what it is. Well, what? Right. Parachute. <laughs> It's not a diving board, is no, it? No, it's not a diving <laughs> board. Better? No. It's no, a parachute, it's right? It's like a wheel, but it doesn't move. Actually, Mrs. Cohen makes and repairs saddles. like a parachute. <laughs> you mean you need a parachute on some of us when we go on the saddle. That's right. We go up and down. That's funny. You're... The thing I can't understand, really, Arlene and Bennett, you know, because uh, Mrs. Cohen has a shop in Blythe, and you know this, called um, Cohen's Leather Shop, right? I don't understand why you didn't remember it. Mrs. We've been there so many times. No, Mrs. Cohen was right here with us eight years ago. And oh, you did this yeah. all eight years ago, and now you're Pulled doing it again. Pulled it before, too. Yep. Yeah. Pulled you before, too. Gotten to look so much like Mary Martin, I didn't recognize her. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great fun. Thanks very much. It was Thank nice you. to have you back. Thank you. And Mrs. Corbin makes, makes wonderful saddles. You can get one for... Two hundred and fifty to six hundred dollars without any real silver work on it. If you want some silver work on it, it'll be a little expensive. How's that? Well, we meet tonight's second mystery guest in just a moment, but first, the second special feature of tonight's program, the appearance of our second mystery challenger. When the blindfolds are all in place, panel, we will proceed. Are they in place? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Will our mystery challenger enter and sign in, please? to one question at a time in turn moving clockwise and let's begin everything with uh, Arlene Francis. Are you a member of the theatrical profession? Yes. Mr. Sir. Golly, you're popular. Uh, are you uh, one of those singers that the kids love? Nope. One down and nine to go, Miss Oakland. The applause is so long. Is there only one of you? Nope. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Randall. I don't quite, quite understand. Oh. There is more than one person there, but only one person is answering? For the moment, yeah. But actually, we would, you know, we'd expand this, given enough opportunity and time. Mm. Given enough opportunity. All right, I'll, I'll give you opportunity and time. <laughs> uh, I, my question is, is the other person a girl? Mm. No. no. <laughs> Down and I, to go. I'm not convinced. Arlene? <laughs> <laughs> You're all fellows, but you don't sing, is that it? Yep. Um, are you appearing in a club as an act? Nope. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Are there more than three of you? Yep. All right, Miss Oakland. Oh. And there's no music? connected with this in any way? Has that been established? I don't believe it has. You could inquire if you'd uh, like to. Is there... Do you make music? Yep. Oh. Mr. Randall? Uh, you are a group that makes music. 
That's very good. Good thinking, man. Ah. Uh, now, obviously, my job is to discover which group you are. Right? Right. I pass to our leader. You can't keep I, doing I, that. No, I narrowed it down for you. <laughs> All right, you're a group that plays and you don't sing. Yes. Yep. Um, I could have got that. Are you, <laughs> are you hip rather than symphonic? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> oh, uh... Our voice told me something, then. <laughs> Did you want to take a stab, Arlene? You looked as though you wanted to. No, I'm thinking of the... Uh, they sing, too, though. They don't just play. I can't think All right, of the that's uh, Mr. Sir. Are you a band rather than an orchestra? Mm. Yes. Miss mm. Oakley. Are you the Tijuana Brass? Oh. Oh! Unprecedented is almost a cliche, but the success that you all won is unprecedented. Well, you've got four albums now. Seven, Seven, Seven albums. albums. <laughs> the bestseller. Uh, Herb Alpert is the boss. And yes. Herb, would, would you please uh, right, introduce have, the fellas? Uh, Nick Ciroli on your left, John. And Nick. Tony Collish. Nick is uh, our drummer, Tony, trumpet player. Uh, Bob Edmondson, trombone. John Paisano, guitar. Yeah. Lou Pagani, piano. And Pat Senator on bass. Why didn't they bring their instruments? Well, I must say, Herb, without uh, painting the lily, I guess you brought brass instruments back into their proper place in the scheme of things. Mrs. Daly is one of your most devoted mm -hmm. uh, followers. And, uh, well, things we... have been pretty nice for us. Mr. Alpert, yes. what release, what, what company releases your records? A company called A and M Records, owned by uh, owned myself. by you, <laughs> yeah. and my, and my partner, oh, my, oddly my enough, partner Jerry it. Moss. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Actually, as a sidebar, and, and and of course it was a tragic thing, but not as tragic as it might have been. The great fire in Chicago, you know, at McCormick Hall. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, was it? We we were uh, we started our tour about ten days ago, and we were playing at McCormick Place for uh, four nights, and a week ago, last uh, Sunday night. We uh, really brought the house down. You. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only reason we can yeah. joke about it, but you know, it's not you know, the type of thing you'd want to joke about. But luckily enough, well, we all realize it, it could have been a lot worse, and we're uh, very indebted to uh, one of the straight of uh, the stage group, Pete Mancini by name, who saved all our instruments. Because the first report we had uh, was that our equipment was under four feet of water. For oh, Lord's sake! Uh, and Mancini had gotten all your equipment out. Yes, uh, yeah. and nobody was hurt, so it was a great night. Mm -hmm. For uh, the Tijuana Brass and for the whole, all the rest of it. Yeah. Thanks very much. John, I would like to say, if I might, yeah. we're uh, uh, on our way back to Los Angeles where we're working on a special for CBS. Uh, oh, that's for a singer sewing machine. It'll be shown April 24th. Right, I should uh, have Nine o'clock. April 24th, nine o'clock <laughs> on CBS. Yes. Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. <laughs> right. been very interesting tonight, and our overall panel have done very well. We'll all be back after. Well, Miss Sue and Tony, once again, it's been very nice to have you with us. Hope you had some fun. We pulled a few surprises on you tonight. Lovely to be back. And good night, Miss Sue Oakland. Good night, Tony, and good luck with your new record, Bo Bodio. Bo Bodio? No. Oh, I can hardly wait. I know. It's a big thing the world's waiting for. <laughs> good night, Ellie. Think you'll replace the Tijuana Brass? <laughs> I have my own problems. <laughs> good night. Good night, Bennett, dear. Aren't we stupid about that lady with a saddle? Yes, frankly. <laughs> good night, John. Yes, we were. And it doesn't take a lot of brass to say it, either. <laughs> that? Good night, John. Uh, good night. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Tony. And thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Line? Association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. Francis Gown is from Bon McKellar, Miss Oakland, dressed by Oscar De La Renta. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Boing, boing.
Going Betty at respectthepouch.com. <laughs> Where are you? We got some work to do now. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? We need some help from you now. Come on, Scooby Doo, I see you. Pretending you got a silver. You're not fooling me, cause I can't see the way you shake and shiver. You know we got a mystery to solve for Scooby Doo. Be ready for your act. I took Bernard, the boy raised by bees, to the zoo, where he immediately noticed an animal fond of honey. Oh, Bernard, no! Look, look what I've got. Come on! A honey taste big enough for a bee. Honeycomb cereal, part of a complete breakfast. Uncle John, the Ape Man of Forbidden Mountain. What a groovy title for a picture. It sure was swell of you to give us jobs as extras. Kids, I'm the grateful one. I need you because the local people won't work in this film. Why is that, Mr. Maxwell? Well, the local people are very superstitious. <laughs> they believe an old legend about a real Ape Man. They say he's the one that burned down the old mansion years ago. Well, I look. How do you look? I don't see any difference. <laughs> <laughs> We've had three reports that the ape man has been seen up here at night. They've seen a real ape man? Real ape man? <laughs> I just remembered a dental appointment back in town. Stop it, you.